What's up guys, Preserver Games here. Today we're taking a look at Kenshi. Kenshi is described as a hardcore survival RPG RTS sandbox city building game developed by Lo-Fi Studios. Our main goal for the series is to play it as difficult as possible. We will not be saving the game at all, everything will be automatic saves. And once the characters are dead, we have to start a new game. Today, we will be doing the rock bottom start, which means you have one arm, you are hungry, you're in the middle of nowhere, and to top it all off, you are all alone. What we're going to do is we're going to try and change the hunger time down to the lowest, which means you will get hungry more often. The chance of death will go to the highest. This also affects NPCs as well as players. So the chance of death increasing just increases the chance that the person will bleed out and die at the point of being knocked out. Or even before that, you could bleed out and then get knocked out unconscious from the blood loss. So we're going to go down and change the global damage multiplier, and it's defined as basically not affecting the game by making it harder or easier. It just affects the speed of battles, and we're going to change that up to four times. We're also going to go over to the production speed, the building speed, and the research speed, and we're going to change that down to 0.25, which means you only build these things or research about a quarter as much as you normally would. So it's extremely a lot harder in terms of that regard. And we're going to drop that number of nest multiplier all the way up to four times, which means that the animals will be spawning four times the rate as normal so we can have more wonderful beasties to rip our face to shreds. And the bandits will be able to loot the player, so we lose everything if we die and they will loot us for our food and money and everything of that such. So now we're in the loading screen and I will say that this is going to be a very difficult series. So we might die pretty early on and it will involve a lot of new game restarts and so on. So just be prepared for that. Don't get too attached to one character because he could die any moment, especially at the current settings that we're at right now. Just like a simple guy walking by and slashing me once would kill me instantaneously. I'm going to go ahead and make my character. I'll cut right here and be back in just a second. We are back with our character named Naked Dude right now. I'm going to go ahead and change his eye color real quick to something more prevalent I guess you could say and swap his name over to Lars as in L-A-R-S and that'll be a character that we're going to stick with for right now to be our main character. We have loaded in and as you can see we are in the middle of absolutely nowhere. There is a lot of dunes everywhere around here. If I do just a 360 I don't see any town inside. Now that could be for my rendering options but shouldn't be too far away from a main town. I do see that there's some nomads right here is what it looks like. Sorry, no traders guild. Okay. I mean, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll wait and see if these traders guilds get ambushed by that skimmer right up there. Yep, that one. I'm going to see if he hits them. And if we're lucky, we might be able to get some robotic components or maybe like a robotic repair kit from these guys and sell it for a lot of money. Which would be really nice in this uh, this game mode that we're playing right now, so... Oh, well, there goes my plans of the skimmer killing everything. Well, he kind of went flying about a thousand yards. Still, we... Oh, wow, that's a lot of skimmers coming down on the left right there. So we can go ahead and get... Ooh, okay, there's another one dead already. I thought it was lunging at me for a second. Wow, these guys are actually clearing house with those skimmers. Not a joke. This guy's hit hard. Oh, they actually succeeded in killing those skimmers. Oh, but cool. Uh, One of the pack animals went down, so... We might be able to loot some cool stuff from that. I'm going to go ahead and sneak real quick so I don't get caught when I steal, if there's anything in here. Ooh, yep, there we go. Authentic skeleton repair kits. These things are very, very good for selling. They are about a thousand cats each, I believe, so might as well get all of those. And I do see some ration packs there. Take that first aid kit. Let's get these ration packs and let's get out of here. And they don't care. Okay, we got it. Cool, so I'm going to make my way to the nearest town and see if we can find any form of bar or anything like that to recruit some more people. And I will cut back once I get there. I see that the nearest town is directly in front of us. We have arrived at the nearest town, and I did see that there is a bar in here. Preferably, I'm going to try and find some recruits and see if I can get some humans, because I will be going to the Holy City later on, or the Holy Nation. And they really don't like anyone that's not human. So I'm going to go ahead and sell these authentic skeleton or repair kits off. Let's see how much we get. Alright, done, done, done. And just like that, we have what looks like 15,000? Yep. 
That's quite a lot of money to start off on. It's really, really good. I might buy some property here, actually, being that we have so much money. Uh, these properties are kind of expensive. Just these long houses right here are 19,000. That's crazy. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be paying that much money for a house. Especially, well, I mean, I guess I could get more money, but still, I don't think it's really worth it to buy a house in this area just because the nobles can just decide to shoot me with a crossbow anytime they want to and I don't want to deal with it. Whereas, even though the Holy Empire is kind of racist, they're still like super chill with anyone that's following their religion and they don't randomly kill me while I'm walking down the dunes. I am going to purchase this house real quick just so I have an area to build stuff at and preferably get some technology. I went ahead and just laid down this research bench. I'm going to go grab the building materials for it and let's see if we can get some research going so we can probably survive a little bit more. I don't know, maybe I'm going to research some beds or something, but most likely I'm probably just going to research gear storage and item storage and such like that. Get another companion and then get out of here as soon as possible because this place is extremely dangerous compared to some of the other places in the world. Though it's nowhere near as bad as the swamp in the south, I think I don't really like it here. Just because the nobles are kind of homicidal when it comes to random people. Alright, we do have the research bench completed. I think we're going to try and research small houses and see if we can get some equipment from that. Maybe to be able to research some beds. But first, I'm going to need some science books, which I totally forgot to go get earlier. I'm gonna go pick them up real quick and be right back. I did go pick up some science books. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in and go ahead and research those small houses. There we are, and it's started. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go look for some new recruits and see if we can pick up anyone else that can be our research pawn while we do other things. They can just research while we're running around doing whatever we need to do. Unfortunately, all I found in there was some shinobi and a hiver, which is like a bug creature. The problem with the Hivers is that the Holy Nation really hates them and being that I plan on moving over there, I want to kind of keep away from recruiting Hivers. I'm just looking to see if there's another bar real quick, but so far there seems to be the only bar in the town. There's a couple of shops that I want to take a look at though, like this one right over here. Uh, probably pick up a backpack right here. I decided to go with these wooden backpacks because they make all the items that you put into it stackable. Which means you can pick up like anywhere from, I believe it's five to nine items of the same item in the backpack, unlike the other backpacks, which only take up a separate slot for each individual item. And I went ahead and picked up those horns right there. I'm actually going to run out and see if I can find some more skeevers. Skeevers? What? Skimmers, I'm sorry. That would be able to get these horns from because they are pretty valuable to sell, but. I do hear this crossbow shooting and I do not want to be around that because I've had way too many playthroughs be ended by a missed crossfire shot directly into my body and I'm not really in the mood to restart a game right now so I'm going to move out of that area. I don't really care much about the horns. Here's that hyper guy I told you about. I thought about twice picking him up and I believe I'm going to go ahead and recruit him just because even though he is a hyper and the holy nation hates him, they're pretty pretty lenient when it comes to bringing these guys through with a human so they might actually let him through not sure as of yet i might pick him up might not i'll figure out in just a few minutes although it'd be really good to have multiple people to do, perform per first aid or someone to do research on the side so i don't have to do it on my own self because that would really suck to be unconscious and not be able to heal yourself so uh he's about 3,000 cats. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but being that I have like 8,000 still, might as well go and buy it. Who cares? There's a samurai laying dead on the ground right here. I really want to pick up his equipment, but however, if I try to steal his equipment, they'll catch me and throw me in jail and possibly kill me. Uh, I do have a kidnap of 100%, so I could pick him up and take him out, but right now it's just not really a good idea because as you see, there's like 60 billion people near me. And it doesn't look like the traffic's going to slow down anytime soon, so I think I'm going to leave him alone. Just go pick up these horns real fast and just let the body be there, not raided or anything. Even though the armor would be really nice to have and I can carry it over to the Holy Nation. Though, the Holy Nation would probably kill me if they saw me wearing that armor because these guys are their enemies. There's a dead guy laying right over here that has quite a bit of good equipment to start off on. I'm going to go ahead and loot this and just pick up everything. I'm just going to go ahead and sneak, make sure no one can see me. 
The stealing chance is 100%. I'm not sure if I would actually get imprisoned for this because this was an outlaw, which means, you know, obviously he's not part of the town. They shouldn't imprison me for stealing it, but just in case, I'm going to sneak in. Cool thing is I picked up these sandals, which would be really nice for picking up, uh, or not picking up, but running away. So they actually increase your athletic speed by, I think, 1.03%, so it's pretty decent. But I uh, actually got some clothes now, no longer naked. Goals. First world goals. After a while, I finally caved and picked up the hiver. His name is Puhat, and I'm going to make him look absolutely marvelous. Here's the completed masterpiece of our boy, the amazing Puhat. I think he looks very fitting for a hiver, and uh, I believe if I told the Holy Nation that he was a pack animal, they would probably believe it also. So, being that we're taking him back to the Holy Nation, gotta make him look degraded as possible. And he gave me my little goblin who just goes over and uh, sits in that position and does my research for me, because that's pretty much all he'll be doing. I want to take a moment and welcome Puhat home. <laughs> he just looks really well fitted into this environment of being my mad scientist researcher. I'm just going to leave him there for a little bit, maybe give him some food so he doesn't starve to death. Here you go, you can have like one of my ration packs so you don't die within like five minutes, because you got to be worth something. Poor dude, always getting the short end of the stick. I found this corpse outside of town that has two first aid kits on it and some pretty decent armor. I was going to loot him, but this guy just picked him up <laughs> right when I was about to loot him. So I'm just going to let him take that. I'm just going to be happy with my plated long boots. I'm going to try and steal these. Hopefully someone doesn't kill me the second I pick them up. Let's take a look here. Just trying to see if I can get a moment where people can't see me. Though, judging by the 5 billion people around me, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that moment. I'm just going to go ahead and try and pick it up and see if I can just grab them without uh, anyone killing me. Forget it, let's just go for it. Alright, no sneak and no one tried to kill me. Cool, so we just got some plated long boots secured. They have some pretty good stats on them. I did see that they have standard grade, so these are pretty okay. I'm going to go ahead and equip them and bring my straw sandals back to my backpack. Back in my house, and I'm going to go ahead and give... Puhat this foul meat, so I'm not gonna waste my fresh meat on my little goblin here I'm gonna go ahead and give him all the foul meat that I have because he's one of the only races who can eat the foul meat So might as well just load him up on every single foul meat that I get because there is a lot of it over in this area Because the skimmers drop a ton of it every time they die If you're curious about what these stalls are around the area It's a mod that I have installed where they all open up these little shops It just makes those unused stalls that are in the base game actually have vendors on it so it's really nice to pick up some items from that they just have like a general assortment of things they're not really specialized in something specific i was just doing my daily rounds at the bar when suddenly there was a massive battle that just happened between these nomadic traders and the guards for some reason i don't know what could have caused it but i'm just going to the loot here to see if i can find some of the more skeleton repair kits that we can sell off for a crap ton of money uh, as you can see, I do have 25,000 now. I actually picked up some more of the skulls and repair kits from some of the other Garus that were around and sold them off, but it doesn't look like there is any more. Uh, yeah, there's this one. That, this is the one I looted earlier that had all the skulls and repair kits in it. Man, if I keep getting this lucky with all these massive battles, maybe that's just like the benefit of having a giant population is they just randomly kill each other all the time and then I could just loot from it and make a ton of money. So here I am sitting on 25k and it's just the beginning of the game still. I'm gonna go pick up another recruit and make my way over to the holy cities. I did find a Zumi in this bar. She's a companion that has high scientific skills and very good athletics. I think she'd be great to follow me over to the holy cities. There's some bodyguards down on the first floor too. I think I'm gonna hire them for two days for 4,000 cats, which is the in-game currency. And they will protect me all the way to Blister Hill, which is the capital of the holy city. I think this is a pretty good investment, being that I still have $10,000 afterwards and they're going to protect my life on the way there. Hopefully it'll turn out to be really well and we can actually make it there. Alright, and on that note, I am on the way to the Holy Empire. Uh, join me on the next episode whenever I actually make my journey there. Hopefully we can just survive the uh, massive amounts of bandits, skimmers, and bone dogs that we'll run across. And uh, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Thanks, appreciate it. See you in the next video.